Welcome to another tutorial by Longhorn Physics. In this tutorial, we want to talk about projectiles at an angle. So here's our problem. A golfer hits a golf ball at 35 degrees east with respect to the horizontal. The initial velocity is 25 meters per second. How far does the ball travel in the horizontal direction? So before we uh, actually show the calculations, again, I always like to go over the uh, fundamentals of the problem, which are knowing the equation, the symbols in the equation, and the uh, matching units, and a little bit of the concept information you need to solve a problem like this. So let's go over some conceptual things before we uh, derive the equation to solve our problem. Um, how many components does the initial velocity of a projectile at an angle have? It has two. And we have to be able to calculate these two to, to do our final uh, calculations that have to do with how far it travels. So they also are independent as you, of each other, as you can see in the diagram here. And v, what is, here's some questions. What is Vx at the top of the trajectory? Vx is the same through all the flight. It's never zero. So if it starts out at 10 meters per second, it will be 10 meters per second at the top. What about the y component? What is the y component at the top of the trajectory? Well, at the top of the flight, it's zero. If not, our projectile would never begin to head back towards Earth. What is the gravity at the top of the trajectory? Gravity is always negative 9.8 meters per second. It's never zero. Uh, it's a misconception up here at the top of the projectile. You might think it's zero, but it's always negative. And it's, on Earth, it's always around negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Here's some more fundamental things about projectiles at an angle. Uh, in the diagram, you can see we've broken it down to all the important um, components you have. So you have your initial speed at launch at an angle. And you have a y component, x component. Here's your dx. Here's your dy. Here's your t to the top and t to the total. We'll use all of these things here to um, uh, derive equations that we can use to solve in certain aspects of projectiles in motion. So again, we also need to make sure we know all the units for each. Acceleration is meters per second squared. Gravity is uh, g per symbol, meters per second squared. Our final speed, our initial speed, they're both meters per second in physics. Time is seconds, and distance is going to be in meters. So let's start uh, by getting to know the equations we need for projectiles at an angle. So here's our, to get our horizontal component, the, we uh, use the subscript uh, x. And that's going to be equal to cosine of the angle times your initial speed. To find the vertical component of your initial speed, that's just going to be the sine of the angle times the initial launch speed. So that's your uh, Vy component. Again, we, we need to know our, our three amigos. This is a separate tutorial i shown uh, before. Uh, these are three kinematic equations we use to solve many equations that have to do with motion and physics. So using our three amigos, we come up with uh, four different equations we can use here. So we want to find the range of the projectile, which is what we're trying to do in our problem. How far does it go in the horizontal direction? Dx is equal to the dx times the total time in the air. So what if you want to find the, the time to the top? It's just your y component divided by gravity. It, uh, it makes sense that if you double the time to the top, you get your total time in the air. And what is the maximum height reached by a projectile? It's uh, the y component squared divided by the product of twice the gravity. OK, so back to our problem here. Uh, in order to figure out how far the ball travels in a horizontal direction, the first thing you'll have to do is uh, break down the components. And so we see it here. We go sine 35 times the initial speed of 25. We get 14.4 meters per second. And then our x component is going to be the cosine of 35 times 25. This is 20.5 meters per second. So if you go over here, you see we, our final answer is 60.3 meters. But you notice how we use the vx component to, um, to start that. But we also need the total time. So the first thing you'd have to do is get the time to the top using a vy component divided by gravity, which gives you 1.47 seconds. So if we double that, we get our total time. So that would give you about 2.94 seconds. So our final answer comes out to be 60.3, which 
the dx, which is our range, would be 20.5 20 times 2.94. And again, the answer comes out in meters. So this tutorial um, is part of, a, of my book called My First Physics Book of Motion. It's a 153-page book that's designed for uh, students new to physics um, from high school to collegiate level. Uh, it makes sure that you uh, learn the fundamentals and terminology units as problem solving uh, and problem solving skills. So you show two different methods there uh, for solving problems. Uh, the study guide takes a hands-on approach has many interactive tables, worksheets, and mini quizzes. And then, of course, uh, you see how this is referenced uh, to the book. It's available at starstudyguide.com or straight at, at amazon.com. I guess typing these keywords would help you find it. But if you go to starstudy.com, so the two ways there, you can link to Amazon. Uh, if you think you want to see more about the book, 